Hello, my name is John Clifford and I'm a senior fellow with Construct Software. I just got back from an engagement with a very large customer who was struggling with their agile adoption and specifically with frustration that they were feeling because they didn't seem to be accomplishing much during sprints. They weren't hitting their sprint goals and they felt very bad about that but didn't understand why. So we sat down and had a good discussion and it very quickly became apparent that the problem was that they were not properly sizing their backlog items because they didn't understand how to do it. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. First, backlog items are deliverables and not activities. What does that mean? It means that backlog items should not be constructed as tasks, but should be constructed as what we're going to deliver to the customer, right? The tasks or activities are what the team will do to further the implementation of that deliverable, of that backlog item. So remember that teams own and implement deliverables, team members own and fulfill or complete tasks. Okay, let's get, talk about a sizing rule of thumb. How big should my backlog items be? Well, they can't be so small that we can get them done in half a day with one person because that probably is just a task. They should have an increment of value, okay? Something that we can actually show a difference in functionality after we're finished with the item. Okay, so a good rule of thumb to use is that more than one developer or Scrum team member should be able to work on a backlog item simultaneously while the backlog item itself should be able to be completed fully within the confines of a single sprint by less than the full team. Okay, so we don't want backlog items that require all the team to work on it most of the sprint. Those tend to be too large. If anything goes wrong, you're in epic land. You've got an item that's too big to, to successfully or really accomplish within a sprint. So keep that rule of thumb in mind. It's very useful. Now remember when we talked about value, we must be producing an increment of value, but here's where people get confused. They think that the value must be able to be deployed independently as soon as the sprint is over. And that's not what Scrum calls for. Scrum calls for us to deliver this increment and add it to the existing product and we have to add more value to the product. However, let's talk about delivery versus deployment. Delivery is a Scrum team responsibility. Deployment to the customer is a business decision. So when do we deploy? We deploy when the value of the increment we produce exceeds the cost of deployment to the customer, both to the customer and to ourselves. For instance, in some industries, uh, a lot of testing or validation has to go on before a company can accept a new version of something. Think of flight control software for a commercial airliner or medical design, device software for uh, a tool that's used during brain surgery. We don't want to necessarily have these things taken without a lot of testing and trust me our customers don't want this either. So instead we tend to batch up deliverables at the end of sprints until we have enough value to justify a more extensive customer-based testing approach. This is actually required by law in the US and in Europe if you're doing medical devices or flight control software. Okay so think about that. Don't worry about the value itself because story and epic are attributes of the size of the amount of work we're going to do, not the amount of value we're going to add. As long as we're adding some value, it's good enough. Okay. So we talked about this with the team and it really resonated with them and we started trying another backlog and they realized very quickly that some items were too big and some items were too small. You know, we want the Goldilocks approach where it's just right and we were able to shape the items in their backlog for the upcoming sprints to be more appropriately sized. And they felt very good about that and they felt confident that now they could actually deliver at the end of a sprint and feel good about themselves.